it was real discomfort after the Netanyahu speech. Let's take this in order, because first, this magnificent speech, and then we're going to talk about the people who didn't find it so wonderful. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu walked onto the floor of the House of Representatives, a joint session of Congress. You know who should have been there, and Dwayne put this very well a few moments ago. Kamala Harris had the opportunity to rise above uh, the the current uh, uh, cauldron of political back and forth and say, look, I, I'm on the Palestinian side of this. I've had criticism of Netanyahu. There are people in my party, you know, who clearly hate Jews. I wouldn't expect her to say that. But, but the, the optics, the imagery would be that despite what Biden has said, despite what my party has said, despite what differences our administration may have with Netanyahu, he's our only genuine ally in the Middle East. The alliance between America and Israel is vital. So yes, I am going to be there. I'm going to phone the sorority sisters and say, uh, guys, I, I can't make it. I kind of need to do something that remotely looks like I deserve to be the leader of the free world. I'm going to at least appear to be worthy of consideration as commander in chief and she just couldn't do it as Bibi Netanyahu cut number one delivered these wonderful words I want to thank you for giving me the profound honor of addressing this great citadel of democracy for the fourth time We meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. When you take a look at those words, how really do you disagree with them? How do you view October 7th differently? How can you be morally and intellectually blind to the necessity, to Israel's moral foundation for fighting back against this kind of monstrosity? Cut to Netanyahu again. My friends, defeating our brutal enemies requires both courage and clarity. Clarity begins by knowing the difference between good and evil. Yet incredibly, many anti-Israel protesters, many choose to stand with evil. They stand with Hamas. They stand with rapists and murderers. They stand with people who came into the kibbutzim, into a home. The parents hid the children, the two babies, in the attic, in a secret attic. They murder the families. The parents, they find the secret latch to the hidden attic, and then they murder the babies. These protesters stand with them. They should be ashamed of themselves. And yet it wasn't exactly shame from these people that we saw on the streets of Washington. I grew up in the suburbs of D.C., uh, dad in the military, so I thank him for my uh, native Texan status and for, uh, as he worked in the Pentagon, for growing up in the Maryland suburbs and, and, and enjoying a, a childhood in what was once a pleasant place to live. Then I had the chance to go back and work in D.C. from 90 to 94 doing talk shows. And Union Station was in its heyday. It was just a beautiful place. Of course, it's where you went to get on a train, you know, to go ride a, you know, the train to New York or wherever Amtrak was going to take you that day. But it was also a magnificent uh, show place. It was architecturally magnificent. There were lots of stores and restaurants and a really cool food court. I like food courts. And Union Station was just a gem in the D.C. crown. In, in the years since it has fallen, as many urban spaces do, especially in you know, Democrat-run cities, into certain disrepair. It was getting a little long in the tooth. And yesterday, Union Station became a cauldron, a hotbed of Jew-hating, American flag burning their flagpoles at Union Station. People, people 
tore down the American flags, and for a little bit there, the Palestinian flags flew from those flagpoles. Now, I, I'm going to stop just short of suggesting that these people should have been shot, but not much short, because the notion of a violent law enforcement response to this, and maybe I just mean having them yanked from the flagpoles, restrained, tackled, hogtied, whatever it takes, our monuments, our public spaces must be protected from these idiots.